Adam Ross, Shave and Knuckles for Justice. I watched in pain for our, from long-term tooth damage. My family was destroyed and I watched death. I watched death that was preventable. The fraud squad are done. Revolution. Man, Adam, I'm so sorry you went through that. And this is why it like breaks my heart and then enrages me. I've heard, I, I don't know how many stories like this. I mean, when I met Amy Valela and she told her story about losing her daughter, I just was like, I was so sad and then so angry. So if you're not angry about this, then I don't know what, you, then you don't care. You must have really good health care. So thank you for supporting the show, Adam. I'm so sorry you went through that. I'm so sorry your family went through that. And I'm sorry you live in a country where the for-profit healthcare system literally murders people. It murders people. That's an act of violence. It, Jimmy saying, fuck AOC, that's an act of violence. No, that's not an act of violence. What happened to your family is an act of violence. And these squad people going, it's not fair. It's not nice. You mean, you mean. I mean, honestly, you're really not helping the women should be in power movement because you're saying like, oh, so when you guys get in power and have to take shit, you start complaining. Man, I was in Russia a year ago, a little over a year ago. And I learned about the female Russian snipers. Their job was to put a fucking bullet between the eyes of any goddamn Nazi that came in their crosshairs. That was these Russian women's job during World War II to fucking kill Nazis because Nazis were killing them. Nazis wanted to destroy them. Russia lost 20 million people in World War II. 20 million people. The Nazis were trying to murder them, so they said, fuck you, we're going to kill you. How many millions of people have died? How many millions of people have gone through what Adam Ross's family went through or Amy Valela's family or what Jimmy went through? He's still alive, luckily, but it bankrupted him and Steph. And he's pulled out from it and he's had a successful career now, thank God. And oh, wow, he bought a house. What a monster. How many people have been murdered by our for-profit healthcare system? And the squad, you get some power, finally get some power. We all cheer for your power. I cheered for your power. Jimmy cheered for your power. It's a new day, diverse, women of color in Congress. Awesome. Go get it. This is great. This is a win for all of us. I didn't feel threatened at all as a white male. I was like, great. I'm tired of these jackass white guys. Get in there. Fucking fight. And then you don't fight. Russian women fucking killed Nazis who were trying to eliminate their country. And the for-profit healthcare system doesn't care about you. It doesn't care if your family died. Do you have a child that died because of you didn't have healthcare? The for-profit healthcare system doesn't fucking care because it is murdering people. It's murdering people. The for-profit healthcare system is murdering people. And you say, Jimmy Dore said, fuck off. And that's an act of violence. No, you doing nothing is an act of violence. You standing around being weak, you're weak. I mean, are Russian women just tougher? Is that it? You got to be kidding me, man. We're being murdered by capitalism every day. There's a war declared upon the American people by capitalism, by for-profit healthcare system is declared war on us. We're in the middle of a pandemic and you're complaining about an angry comedian. Well, pretty please with sugar on top. Do what you said you were going to do or get the fuck out of the way. You're too weak to handle this. You're too weak. Let's get some fucking Russian women snipers in Congress. Maybe they'll take care of this fucking problem. Give me some mean things. Get out, buttercup. I'm sorry, pumpkin. Is it too hard? Is Congress too hard, pumpkin? Get out. Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell are soulless pieces of shit, but at least they say that up front. They have never promised to do one good thing for me or anybody. You promised this. So if you can't handle this fight, then get out. If this is too mean, seriously, get out. Every member of Congress should have to take fucking kickboxing classes. You should learn how to actually fist fight. 
I've studied martial arts for 15, 16 years now. I've trained with a lot of amazing fight. I've trained with a lot of amazing women. Some of them teeny women who could fucking lay you out. And I got mad respect for them. And when you, when you lit them up in sparring or tap them out, they didn't go, it's not fair. They went right on knuckle up because we trained like equals. I didn't go easier or harder. We trained as equals. That's what the beautiful thing was. And so when some chick lit me up, I was like, damn, right on. I didn't go, man, what a girl hit me. I went fucking, that's an awesome martial artist. So when the squad got elected, I said, these are some awesome progressives or so I thought. I don't give a shit. If you're from the Bronx, if you're a woman of color, I don't care if you're an old Jewish guy from Vermont. If you say you're going to fight for me, then do it. And when you back down like Bernie did, like the squad is doing, like Tulsi has done, then I got nothing for you, man. I got nothing for you. Nothing. At least the Republicans have the decency to be honest. They're like, we're a bunch of racist, sexist, greedy, old fucks, old white fuckheads. Oh, at least I know where you stand. Lori Leffler said racist remarks during Black Lives Matter. The W and she's a owner of a WNBA team. The WNBA, those women, those tough, badass women stood up and said, fuck Lori Leffler. We don't want her in our league anymore. Cause those are women that go to battle that get hard fouled when they get hard fouled, they get, they don't go, Oh, the ref. they get up and what, what I've seen fights. I've seen fist fights in the WNBA because they don't take shit off of each other. Just like the NBA. Cause let me tell you something, sweetie, life gets a little hard. Santa Claus isn't real. Okay. You don't get a tea party in Congress. If you acted like the Tea Party and fought the way the Tea Party did, but did it for progressive issues, we might have health care. Hey, squad, you've been in office two fucking years. What have you done? You're celebrity Congress people. You're celebrity politicians. Nobody knows most of the members of Congress. Who, who the fuck name? Who? My dumb congressman, Ted Lieu, does anybody know him outside of our district? Nope. He's not a celebrity he doesn't have 11 million Twitter followers. He doesn't have a brand. He's not on the cover of Vogue. He's no, nor should he be on the cover of Vogue. You have celebrity status and you do nothing with it. I work in show business. I've seen celebrities get celebrity status and then, and then go, wait a minute. I want this. I need this change. You won't even do that. You're acting like a true Hollywood A-lister. Now you just want a bigger house. You just want more money. You're not fighting for anybody. Every time we've had a union strike in show business, a lot of the A-listers are nowhere to be found. Some of them are, but they don't give a fuck because they don't need the working class rights that working class, no name, day rate actors need. So I've seen this before. I've seen this. You get a little taste of fame. All of a sudden you're not wearing the dress you got at Sears. You're wearing the $1,500 dress you got from Versace because they gave you free, they give you free shit now because you're going to be in interviews and they want you looking good wearing their products. I know how this works. So if you can't handle this, kindly get out of the way. And bring in some people, male, female, black, white. I don't give a shit. Just bring me somebody that can brawl. Are there any UFC fighters, like women, female UFC fighters that want to run for Congress and fucking think like a progressive, not like a dipshit Dana White Trumper, but actual like ideas that help the majority of the people? Give me a fighter. Don't give me a military vet. Give me a combat vet. Give me somebody that fights for something that knows how to fight. We are in the fight of our lives. People are dying. We're in a pandemic. The hospital beds are maxed out. Two to 3,000 people are dying every day from a global pandemic, and we don't have free health care, and you're mad at a comedian. Get your priorities straight. Oh, by the way, the climate's collapsing. But that's probably not as severe as, as a comedian that smokes too much weed yelling at you on YouTube. Is that too much? Is this too angry? Is this an act of violence? Did coming too close to the camera, is that too aggressive? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay that 60,000 people die every year. Is this, is this okay? Can I, should I, is this too angry? Is this too angry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this okay? 
hey, there's 85,000 dead children in Yemen. Should I, is that, am I raising my voice? Am I raising my voice? Am I raising my voice? Congress just approved a $740 billion military budget. Uh, I'm sorry, a war budget that murders poor people of color. But you don't give a shit because you're in Congress now. The climate is collapsing. People are dying because they don't have health care. Dying even more so because there's a pandemic. There's an economic depression that is coming. It is coming like a freight train. And you're, you're unhappy that a comedian said, F you. Do what you said you were going to do. You've been in Congress two fucking years. What have you done? Show me what you've done. Show me what big change you've done. Where is it? And don't tell me to wait. We are in the middle of the crisis. The crisis is now. It's London in 1940 and the Nazis are bombing every day. We don't wait. Winston Churchill didn't say, well, let's wait. And you think a comedian saying F you is mean? Pelosi's house and Mitch McConnell's houses just got vandalized. They put a pig's head on Pelosi's house and said, cancel rent. Hungry, starving people evic newly evicted from their homes are coming. And you're going to wish it was just a couple of comedians getting angry at you on Twitter. You're going to wish it was that. Our force to vote. We're the last line of defense. We're the last line of civility before the, the, the masses who are just hungry and, out and on the streets come rushing towards you. And I'm going to go, I tried. All you had to do was give people free health care and $2,000 and you couldn't even do that. Okay. So you're going to watch this video and say, Graham Elwood's nuts or... Graham Elwood's advocating violence. No, I'm saying I'm advocating for you to fight like you said you were going to fight. I'm advocating for you to do the right thing to help the main the people who need it because if you don't, they're going to rise up and there's nothing I will be able to do once that happens. I don't have that big of a show. Jimmy, nobody. If the people rise up, it's too late. And it won't be protests and signs. It'll just be mobs. Open up a history book, kids. This is how the French Revolution started. So pay attention. Shave your knuckles for justice. There's people dying. We are being murdered. Fight for it or get out of the way. Boom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo, at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.